Hello, viewers of Oven Horn of Africa. You are watching our weekly program, Invest in Ethiopia. Today, we'll be focusing on uh, the relationship between UAE and Ethiopia. Uh, I joined by Ambassador of Ethiopia to UAE, Ambassador Umar Hussein. Ambassador, warm welcome to our program. Thank you, brother. Nice to meet you. First, would you tell us uh, the historical relationship between United Arab Emirates and Ethiopia? Thanks so much. Actually, the historical relationship go, you know, more than 40, 50 years, but uh, the former relationship started like uh, 2004, where, you know, the consulate would be established in, was established in uh, Dubai. But before that, there was a for, informal exchange of information and letters between, you know, back to the regime of Al Salasi and the public relationship will be there between the two countries, but the formal will be, uh, you know, undertaken around 2004. Uh, but, you know, if you see how the public was living together, you know, you can find like uh, people who are living for more than 40, 50 years in this country from those days, the relationship goes, you know, along very long years uh, uh, up to now. As you know, investment is one uh, key economic pillar uh, in Ethiopia. How is the UAE participating in this sector uh, in Ethiopia? Uh, I think among the other relationship, you know, the public relationship and other political relationship, the investment engagement is very huge. And uh, currently we have around 100 more than 121 companies in Ethiopia from UAE side who are investing in Ethiopia. And if you see in terms of capital, uh, Emirate investment in Ethiopia reached more than $2.8 billion, which is very huge in number. And that this keeps growing from year to year. Uh, if you see the non-traded oil uh, goods, uh, it reaches around 1.4 billion dollar mainly the investment area is focused in the chemical food and the beverage uh, pharmaceutical and the other sector uh, currently they are also focusing on agriculture if you see the other way the major exports of ethiopian items it is you know currently the meat export coffee export Gold exports are among the other, which has, you know, still very big number. So uh, we can see the trend is growing from time to time. Given that the strong relationship the two countries have, you know, the investment is among the other, which you, which we can say uh, gradually growing very fast. Uh, mainly when we see from the investment that we are receiving from investors that we are receiving from the UA side. Ethiopia has a huge investment potential. Uh, what is the Ethiopian embassy uh, doing in promoting this potential to UAE investors to help them invest in Ethiopia? Yeah, actually, uh, one of an area of focus is, you know, doing business in the other country. Uh, as far as that's concerned, the Ethiopian embassy here in Abu Dhabi is working together with the council is actually working on the area. First in, you know, showing to the investors who are abroad, uh, what are the real opportunities that exists in Ethiopia. So in that regard, we try to uh, show them the investment opportunity in agriculture sector, uh, and also in the pharmaceutical sector and, you know, manufacturing. We always do this minimum, uh, you know, three months, you know, one after the other. Because uh, here in UAE, you, can't, you are not finding only the UAE resident investors. You can find investors who are coming from other parts of the globe. So mm -hmm. we always try to update them who are in the pipeline, as well as who are newly entering the market. Uh, this is the first thing that we do. The second thing is, you know, there are investors who are already uh, in investment in Ethiopia, but whenever they face a challenge on their activity, we have a platform with the Investment Commission in Ethiopia. 
So using that platform, we will, you know, bring to the attention of the leaders or the sector. That way we are solving the challenge that they have. So uh, we have we are also running investment forum parallelly. You know, the investment forum is a platform in which we we see, you know, the version of the investors, what challenge they have, what policy requests they have. And then we will pass that request to the center or to the government of Ethiopia so that, you know, the pol on policy formulation, those issues will be concern, uh, considered. So that way we are trying to, you know, uh, facilitating mainly between, you know, Ethiopia, you know, promoting the version, all version that we have in investment uh, and uh, facilitating for the uh, foreign direct investment that coming to Ethiopia. As you know, uh, UAE uh, become um, active partners of Ethiopia since the reform. How do you describe this uh, relationship uh, currently, the relationship between Ethiopia and uh, UAE? Actually, the relationship between Ethiopia and the UAE is uh, very strong this time. Uh, actually, for me, that strength comes from, you know, the relationship the two leaders has. They are very close and uh, act friendly, apart from, you know, the country to country relationship. So that strength uh, of the two leaders can be, you know, influencing the other uh, part of our duty, which is, you know, investment, which I already mentioned, and other public relationship also. Many, you know, uh, investors from UAE side and the public for visit, apart from investment for tourism, they wanted to Ethiopia, given that the nice weather that we have, uh, even though we have some challenges, still, you know, there are a lot of people traveling from here to Ethiopia because of the tourism as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe, uh, given, you know, the relationship which we have uh, as country to country, public to public, this may, you know, go more than what we really expect and uh, can enrich the level of the development in both economy, political, and the social. So the business, which we mentioned earlier, could be also, you know, because of the relationship, the strong relationship that the two countries have, I believe this go beyond, you know, what what we really expect in the can help the two country in supporting each other and to sustain it also in uh, you know for the further future of the coming generation as well. On the sidelines of uh, COP twenty eight conference, Ethiopia has organized the Green uh, Legacy Pavilion, where it showcased the uh, its best experiences in Green Legacy program. How significant is this conference to Ethiopia in promoting uh, itself? Yeah, in COP28, actually, Ethiopia tried to uh, display itself very well. That's what how I can put it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because what Ethiopia did from you know early beginning was historical. It, it never happened in you know preparation of the COP28 so far. But this time, Ethiopian, you know, get ready from early, like before a month uh, or, you know, uh, before the day, you know, appear. So uh, one of the preparation Ethiopian did was Ethiopian tried to display what really done on the ground. That makes Ethiopian different from the other. Because, you know, when we see most of the pavilion, uh, they 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 try to tell what to be done. Ethiopia differently show what you know she has been done so far. So that that's I think the departure and the, the reason for the attention for the Ethiopian pavilion. Second, uh, we we you know the composition that we have in the pavilion is very unique. The first thing is we brought more than two thousand trees from Ethiopia which has more than 40 varieties that makes unique you know we, we we found in our pavilion something organic so that 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 makes you know the pavilion very attractive the second thing is our green gold you know 
which is our coffee, will be the center of the the pavilion. You know, you go around, you take a look on all thematic area that's presented. And finally, people will take rest and have Ethiopian coffee, that which is very tasty. And sometimes the people come not only to see uh, what's going on in the pavilion, to drink Ethiopian coffee as well. That was the center of the hub. And finally, this attraction, you know, brought many side events to the pavilion. Uh, you know, all African countries are invited to take uh, a discussion in the pavilion. Whenever they have a side event, EGAD was running their, their program there. Leaders visit, uh, starting from His Highness, uh, the everyone was coming, the ministers were coming, ambassadors, many people came to the pavilion. So it was a real show, I can say, uh, which, you know, Ethiopian present to African, to the world as well. So it was a special occasion for Ethiopia to present itself and to display what really going on in Ethiopia as you know economic development is concerned. As you have mentioned, many participants have uh, visited the pavilion, and what was their uh, feedback? Yeah, most of the feedback was very, very positive, and uh, they really some of them they don't know the real version of Ethiopia. You know, people try to mention us in terms of only the problems that we have internally. So when they see what's going on in all thematic area, in energy, in environmental, you know, uh, afforestation, in, you know, forest development, in green legacy, in, you know, wheat project, in agriculture, you know, the people were amazed in that they never know that version. Those who know, Ethiopian version before, they get more, you know, idea about what's going on and the status of the issues. So overall, when we see the feedback, everyone was happy about what has been done so far and they never expect, some of them, you know, telling us, they never expect such display from Ethiopia. Ethiopia and the UAE have also signed various agreements. How do you see the contribution of these agreements for the future cooperation of uh, the two nations? That's already was defined, you know, it's a framework, you know, whenever there is a, such kind of agreement, which is sector based, it's very helpful for the sectors to act accordingly in tourism, development, and many other areas. So I, I believe it takes maybe one, two steps forward, the current relationship that Ethiopia has with UAE because given those agreement, some of the issues already are in pipeline and some of the issues are, you know, started very soon. So if when, you know, by the time we implement all those uh, agreements, the level of the economic relationship between the two countries will be, you know, goes to the higher level. So the only thing is, you know, we need to be intact and the, the sector has to uh, run this issue. Uh, everyone has to be after it, you know, signing the memorandum of understanding does mean nothing if it is not in place. Yeah. So we expect the sector and uh, our embassy will take the facilitation role, the sectors to act accordingly so that those MO will not take much time for implementation. In his speech at the COP28 conference, Prime Minister Dr. Abiy Ahmed stressed the need to focus on combating the impact of uh, climate change. How do you describe it and how important it is for economic growth of developing countries like Ethiopia? Yeah, for me, as someone who know, uh, has an ba agriculture background, you know, for me, the environment issue is not only for the stage. It has a direct relationship with the development. For, May, this is a general issue everybody can speak in the at the you know global level. But if you bring this issue to Africa and Ethiopia, mm -hmm. you know for the country like us who are directly depending on agriculture, it means a lot for us. That's why His Excellency Prime Minister Ravi try to address the direct relationship and direct in you know involvement that Ethiopian has, which is supported by action. 
and also you know requested the world to finance this sector because without finance i don't think uh, you know it's not that easy to compact the impact of climate change in the world today yeah. so for me it has a direct relationship because country like us are you know frequently affected by drought uh, we need to actually we we should not only wait for what we can get as a support. We have to internally try to work like what we have done so far. But it's highly important to have finance for this sector and the leaner program, which has to be supported by action. And for me, it's also uh, very important to see, you know, uh, you know, to to approach in a performance based. For the country who are doing good, there must be additional more support so that others others will be also follow that uh, pathway and that country also you know encourage. So uh, I can say it's directly related. That's why the prime minister tell really what has been done so far and urge for the world to support that sector. Good. Uh, Ethiopia is aggressively working on green legacy initiative for the last few years, but the initiative requires huge financial support. How is UAE uh, supporting Ethiopia on this sector? Yeah, actually, uh, for me, environmental support is not only uh, what has to be paid for green legacy, but it's, you know, there are different approaches to the environment. You know, the first one is, as you as you mentioned, as we mentioned earlier, you know, the the geothermal investment that you know currently signed during the COP twenty eight would directly related to what has been done in the environment. You know, that what is around six hundred million dollar mm. agreement. So that has been signed, and that has a great impact on uh, environment. On top of that. You know, there is a pledge from UAE side for this environment for Africa, in which Ethiopia can also get its own share. Apart from that, what we can get from UAE depends on the project that we have. So Ethiopians uh, need to work on the, you know, project proposals, which is, you know, viable and uh, acceptable. Uh, if we do that, I think, it will be easier for us to get adequate finance from UAE and the other supporters as well. So that that's the only way, you know. As I as I mentioned earlier, no finance. I don't think we can go far. We we can do what we can do in our capacity, but it's not adequate. It's not enough. It's it won't be you know comparable with the problems that we have in hand. So we need finance. For finance, we need projects. Uh, we need, you know, side investment like geothermal, which I mentioned earlier. That way, I think we can manage the problem that we have, at, at least, you know, the, the the major part one. Ethiopia is working on reforming the economic sector. How do you see the attention given to investment in this reform? I think the investment reform is, you know, from time to time, there are things which has been changed from the bank side. You know, I was looking to the export uh, area reform, which has been, you know, favoring the exporters. And the many other changes I've undertaken, you know, uh, subsidy for those who are importing and, uh, you know, investment incentive for those who are coming from abroad, you know, based on the sectors. These are something which is encouraging, you know, as far as investment is concerned. But still we need to work on some area if you take, you know, most of the repeatedly asked question from the foreign investment is how they can take their investment uh, amount away from the country where they invest in terms of dollar, right? Mm. You know, from our side, investor can bring in money in terms of dollar, but they're not allowed to take out that money. So this is one of the critical area where the investors mostly ask it, uh, I'm sure, uh, the national team is working on that, but that's the area where we need to see. In the some others, area also need more attention based on the sector. Otherwise, the, the reforms are 
very helpful and uh, we need to keep changing, keep looking into you know the details so that we can have more investments in the coming years. The role of Ethiopian diaspora living abroad uh, is immense in promoting investment of the nation. Do you have a platform uh, where you discuss the issue with the Ethiopian diaspora in UAE to encourage them to invest in Ethiopia? Yeah, actually, Ethiopian diaspora uh, here in UAE has a platform, their own platform. Uh, there is a community arrangement. We have two, two community, Ethiopian community arrangement. The first one is in Abu Dhabi. The second one is in Dubai, uh, which is organized under the consulate. So they have, you know, two approaches. The first one is the, con the you know, the community organized, which has a revenue itself, uh, wanting to invest in Ethiopia uh, because they have good capital and they always support Ethiopian investment, Ethiopian, you know, national projects. So they want to uh, invest in Ethiopia. This is one approach through the community arrangement that they have. The second one is individuals. Uh, individuals also, you know, who are capable to invest in Ethiopia, uh, you know, always uh, ask for investment, no matter what challenge they face uh, in home country, but they are still uh, working on the investments of Ethiopia. Some of them, you know, did so good also so far, but still we need to work in that area. As far as the platform is concerned, we do have a platform with them. We always discuss with them as we do, you know, the investment forum with foreign direct investments as well. How do you see the TPS investment policy and its role in attracting investors? Is there anything you want to change in relation to policies and strategies currently in place? Actually, I don't have any other issues than what I mentioned earlier, you know, most asked question by the private sector is uh, how they can take out expatriates the money that they invest in Ethiopia. You know, they want to bring in very big amount of dollar, but if, you know, we don't allow them to take, to take back that money by the time they want, uh, they don't, you know, take initiative to invest in Ethiopia. That's the biggest area uh, the second one is uh, some bureaucratic uh, levels as they go down, you know, they are complaining on the service delivery that we have. That's actually uh, what has been taken uh, as an issue also at national level. Ease of doing business must be worked hard. You know, people have to have, you know, a good mentality of service for someone who is coming to our country. Otherwise, I don't have fundamental uh, issues that I can raise other than what has been told before. Mr. Ambassador, finally, if you have any message to add, you are welcome. I don't have much to add, but you know, it's good to repeatedly have such con conversation with even media like you and the tell what really the investors need from our side, what the country need, where we are aside. And uh, uh, we need to, you know, Keep promoting with using our the platform that we have. Keep giving awareness to the community and uh, as well as investors who are looking for Ethiopia. Otherwise, we need to also push the young people who are abroad to get organized, if not individually, to get organized and invest in their country. Because finally, everyone back to home. You know, to get back to home, we need to work from today. So that's maybe the final message I have. Otherwise, I wanted to really say thank you for uh, inviting me to this platform and uh, give such a short brief on the, on the current situation of the two countries. Ambassador of Ethiopia to UAE, Ambassador Morrison, thank you for your time and your deep insight on our program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Dear viewers, that is all what we have for this edition. Till the next program, have a good time.